Jane Wambogo, the JEDA Youth and Nutrition Advisor, ABDP. The importance of improving household nutrition status is by what we consume. And by what we consume, the importance of the various food groups in the food that we consume. We have 10 food groups, and in this food group we can combine them to prepare our fish in different ways. So we are going to see and understand how can we prepare food, fish. What do we combine our fish with so that we have a, diet, a di diverse diet? So you see in our videos on recipes on how to prepare fish in different ways, what to combine the fish with, the vegetables we can use, how to prepare those vegetables, and even how to combine the various foods so that our diet is diverse. ABDP strives that our, all our households have diverse diets that are rich in different micronutrients, that are rich for in different uh, food groups for dietary diversity. We wish to see all our household from the aged to the young and to the whole household consuming at least five food groups in our various categories. And we can produce that and prepare them using fish as the base. Thank you very much and welcome to the recipes. Uh, welcome to our kitchen as we introduce you to some recipes for fish in our, in our, to, to improve our diversity in our kitchens and in our households. We have fish, omena, uh, a type of fish that is very good, very rich in calcium because you eat the whole of it. The fish fillet, we have fresh fish. And this is tilapia. This is also another type of fish that you can use to prepare recipes at home. You can also have fried fish. You can use the fresh fish to make your fried fish or you can buy fresh fish from vendors who prepare fried fish. So we shall start with one thing which is called the fish kebabs. And fish kebabs, we are using fish and arrowroot to make the fish kebab. So we shall use the arrowroot. Arrowroot. This arrowroot, we shall call it ndumba, and then you will require the, if you have to peel it so that it looks like this, and then you grate. So you need the grater to grate your arrowroot, and then when you are making the fish kebabs, you will also need other ingredients. So some of the ingredients you will need are spices, and the spices will depend on which spice you like. So most of the time, you will look for the spice that you have at home or the spice that your family likes and then you will use that spice to prepare the, the fish kebab. So these are some of the spices we used. This is pilau masala. This is mixed spice. And then we have garam masala. So those are the ones we used today. And then after the spices you will need some wheat flour for binding. And then you will need what we call a starch. It, if you don't have um, bread grams, you can just use the fresh bread or you can buy scones to the market and to make your own fresh the bread grams. Easy to make, not so hard. You just take them like this and then like this it will make for you bread grams. And then you have bread grams. That is the ones you can use for making the kebabs. So, for the kebabs, you'll also include dania for the kebabs, you'll include hoho, dania, hoho, and then you'll include also onions. So, once you put all these to, together, the, gra all the, the grated the arrowroot and all the other ingredients, you just mix them. You mix them, plus even the wheat flour, and then after mixing, it is very easy, they bind very easily. So you just bind it. When you cook the kebabs, you, you deep fry in hot oil and then you coat with some, some egg. So this is how it will look like. Fish pilau. And the fish pilau, it is the sorghum. It is called sorghum fish pilau. So what you do, you will boil your sorghum 
make sure it is well boiled and it can when you you pin you take some and you you press it is cooked that is what you use for the pilau the ingredients for the pilau pilau masala you need the onions pilau masala you need the onions you need tomatoes tomatoes and then you need dania you need dania dania and you need also the pili pili ho if you don't have ginger and garlic it is okay you can do without it but if you have it it is it is good when you add it because it makes the pilau taste very well and we shall see the a plate of pilau that we've cooked and we've served and we'll see how it looks like it's very tasty the ingredients are just at home you can use them to bake the the fish the fish sorghum pilau so for fish fingers we were we used fish itself that is the fish fillet and then you cut it like this into small portions like this ones fish fingers take the fillet you cut it into small portions after you've cut into small portions you will take the the fish that you've cut and make some 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 coating for it and the coating we make it from wheat flour you can use any brand of wheat flour it doesn't have to be a particular brand and then you use you use some spices if you like but if you don't like spices it is okay so for us we used mixed spices you use some lemon in the coating some lemon and lemon rind and then you use some eggs eggs in the coating you're supposed to use some eggs so you'll break the eggs and then the coating you'll mix it together it can look something like this it is mixed and then when you want to deep fry it is good when you just put them in the coating like this deep fry them in hot oil it's spiced omena garlic and lemon so the omena you can get omena from the market you can get from the supermarket and then when you get your omena make sure you pick it well because sometimes it has some stones or it has some shells so pick it well after you've picked well you put your omena boil some water wash the omena in hot water and then fry fry your omena the just the normal way you fry and then you can add some lemon lemon juice and lemon juice we are adding it at the end just when you are removing it from the from the fire before you serve just squeeze some lemon juice there because we don't want to kill the vitamin c so it is important you don't add it early groundnut sauce so for the fish groundnut sauce you can use either the dried fish or you can use fresh fish or you can use deep fried fish so you'll get your fresh fish and then you get the ingredients for cooking that is the tomatoes the onions the hoho dania if you like and then you get the tomato the groundnuts the groundnut you can grind groundnut powder or you can use the peanut butter the ground nut that it has been already been ground so you can use the butter itself or you can roast the ground nut and then you pound after pounding you'll get some some flour there that flour you'll use it now to to make the sauce the fish with coconut oil so after deep frying the fish we we fried the fish the normal way you cook your fish and when it's almost ready you add depending on the amount you have like let's say if you are having fish that is around 500 grams you can add maybe like a, around 50 grams 50 mils of 50 mils of the the coconut milk so you add and then you lay, let it cook for like five minutes five around five minutes and then you serve it hot for with any, any other starch that you want to serve it with so for fish sambusas we were making fish with fish and then with cowpeas as the fillings of the sambusas so for that one we have our cowpeas here that is boiled and then the fish it is steamed the fillet that is steamed and then you fry the cowpeas using all the ingredients that you want mostly for our sambusas we like using the leek but if you don't have the leek you can use the onions there's no problem you can just use the onions so once you fried your this the, your ingredient all your ingredients you don't have to use tomatoes you you put the the cowpeas in let it fry let it cook very well and then you add the steamed the steamed fish 
don't let it overcook and don't stir so much because it will crumble and then the the fillings will be very mushy and for the sambusas you will need the pockets and the pockets usually you can you can prepare them yourself depending or you can buy because people prepare them this is how you make pockets you need these pockets you seal them you shall make a paste for sealing after sealing you put the fillings and once you put the fillings you deep fry them in hot oil after preparing your food in the in the kitchen it is good to serve it and when you are serving it is good also to make sure that you are serving a food that is nutritious and it's it's balanced so for this case today we are serving fish sorghum pilau so for the fish sorghum pilau you can serve it as lunch or you can serve it as dinner it is a, a very rich starch uh, because it has enough fiber and it's also very rich in a lot of micronutrients, especially minerals. And when you are serving the fish sorghum pilau, you can serve it with a vegetable that you like. At, it, it, serve it with a vegetable that can easily break the brown in it. So for this place, we've served it with skuma, but you can serve it with another vegetable that you like to eat. And then you can also serve it with a, with a, with a fruit because already the protein is it's in the sorghum because the fish fillet was fried together with the sorghum. And then you can add some tomatoes just to make the plate look appealing. And also, it, also the tomatoes will increase on the variety that you are eating at that sitting. You will see that you are eating variety. Like in this plate, we have more than five varieties of food groups. And our fish omena, it's spiced lemon, garlic, fish omena. And for fish omena, it is a very good type of fish that you can eat because you are eating everything. It's a very rich in calcium, very good for bones and teeth. And then we have now our starch. Our starch for this one, we are eating ugali. And ugali is maize meal. You are using maize meal to make the, the ugali. You can prepare fish with, the, with ugali. And our ugali today is so it's millet sweet potato ugali so you maybe you have sweet potatoes or your children don't like sweet potatoes but you've cooked and the, maybe like a lot you can mash some and then you cook them with ugali so you can cook with any ugali even the white ugali the maize meal ugali you can still add sweet potato or anything that you want to add so our ugali today is millet sweet potato ugali and our fish today we cooked with coconut oil fish groundnut sauce cooked in groundnut sauce and you can serve it with you can serve it with rice even if you like, but as we've served it with ugali and with our vegetables, we have another meal here that we can eat using the fish that we purchased or we produced at home because we have sometimes we have fish ponds. And you can also now do the, the dried, dried, that is the deep fried fish. And the deep fried fish, it is a bit dry, so you need something that you will easily eat with it. It can be even a vegetable. But for today, as we've served it with kachumbari, the way most of us like eating even our, our roasted meat with kachumbari. So it, it still goes well with kachumbari with fish. And we've served it with also with, uh, with the ugali. And this time we are we're serving it with the white ugali and a fruit. And our fruit for, two, for, for, for now is our banana sambusas, which are made from fish and cowpeas. So when you want to make the fish and cowpea sambusas, it's very important that you, 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 you get your, your, the cowpeas that you, you, are, you want to use and you, you boil it to make sure it is ready and then you will incorporate the fish fillet. For the sambusas, we are using the fillet because it's easier to incorporate when you are frying. The fish arrowroot kebabs, which we've, we've made with a variety of ingredients and spices, you choose spices of your choice as you are making them. Uh, you will just mix everything together, that is the fish, which is fillet, and then it is steamed, and then you, you grate your arrow roots, you get your, your onions, you get your ho-ho, then you get your dania, then you'll have some flour, some wheat flour to help in the, in the binding, with some little salt, with spices of your choice. So once you make, put everything together, you just mix, and then you farm it, and then it will, it will give you the binding and then you'll have your, 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 your balls for the, for the, for the kebabs, then you'll deep fry them.
the fish fingers, we made them from fish itself, and then we made we made a mixture, a mixture of wheat flour uh, and sweet potato that is grated, and then plus some eggs, and then plus now some lemon, lemon, lemon rinse, and then the lemon juice. So the snack is also a very rich snack because it's having the sweet potato, which is orange flesh, it's having the fish, it's having the coating, that coating that is come the, the, the wheat flour. And now when you are serving it, you can serve it with vegetables, you can serve it with tea. So for today, as we've served it with some vegetables, it can also be an, a lunch when you don't have some, some, some food to eat. It has variety and it has uh, the, the energy that you, can, you need from the, from the wheat flour. So when you are serving the, the, your snacks, you can serve with whatever you want. You can serve with tea, you can serve with, with fruit juice, you can serve with vegetables, just as the way as we've done. And then your snack is good to go. Or you can just eat your snack and take some water. As you eat your food, it's very important that you take water. Because water is required in everything that is happening in your body. And it's also, you lose the water, especially in hot days, when you are sweating or when, or when you are going for short call, you lose a lot of water. So it is very, very, very important that you take water and take at least eight glasses. Those are two liters. This is one liter. If you are using bottled water, this is another liter. But if you are not using bottled water, you can use this glass and take eight glasses of water in a day. You don't have to take them at a go spread your water it's very important because it's it's a lubricator in the body and it, it helps the body in every function so you don't have to take it that like i'm taking it at lunchtime alone no spread your water from morning to 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 at least don't take your water when you're almost going to bed we say you take your water from morning to at least six o'clock it is okay so that you don't have to have problems for the ones who shall have problems at night of going to to for short calls you don't have those problems but at least, I insist, take at least eight glasses of water in a day. Water is life and it can save a lot of issues. We have something here that can help us guide when we are eating our food daily so that we know if we are eating food from different food groups. So this is one we call it the food pyramid, which is a food pyramid guide. And it can easily guide you to know the variety that you are eating and then from the each, each food group also there is variety and there's also variety as in general to improve your diversity. Very important, as we said earlier, water. Very important to take water and you can see the pyramid the way it goes. It tells you from the one that is down is the, the one you should take most as you go, as you go up, as you go up. So we shall start down. Down is water. As we said earlier, you should take at least two liters of water or eight glasses. And our glasses should be around 250 mils. This is the section where we are having our starchy foods, the foods that provide for us energy. And these starchy foods include the, the cereals, like one of them is like the sorghum. And then we have the, may, the, we have the, the millet flour, we have the, maize, the wheat flour, we have the maize meal, and all these uh, plus arrow plus the root crops and plantains. Plantains are, made, are bananas and any root crop. Our next food group is the food group of vegetables and fruits. And in vegetables are fruits that are very important for us for the micronutrients, which are which which help in everything in our bodies. It requires the micronutrients that are like the fuels or the catalyst to make everything happen in our bodies. So for the micronutrients, which are the, the minerals and the vitamins, you get them from the fruits and the vegetables, which are in this category. And then you go to the next food group, which is the, the proteins. And you have both plant proteins and animal proteins. So the plant proteins are like the cowpeas. The eggs are animal protein. So for our plant proteins, we have the beans, we have the lent any lentils or all legumes, the beans, the jaya, the green grams, all those are plant proteins. And the animal proteins, we have fish, we have meat, we have chicken, we have, we have pork, we have lamb, and we have eggs. All those we call them proteins, are in the category of proteins. So at the top, topmost, we have the, the oils and the sugars, which we are supposed to take in limitation. So in most cases, you just have you use it when it's necessary. But with all these foods, you can cook them without even oil. 
And then once in a while you can put oil or when you are frying, you can fry, you can, you can steam, you can boil without oil, some of these foods. So what is important in this pyramid is that as you look at the pyramid, it is reducing as you go up, which means the food that, is, that you should eat may be more. It is this food because you require the energy. And then the next food that should be a lot, even on your plate, it should be the fruits and the vegetables. Because those ones now, are the, they, they run everything in the body, so they're required in plenty. The proteins, you are supposed to eat now, compared to the fruits and vegetables, you are supposed to eat proteins in small amounts depending on which protein you are eating. Like maybe the, if you are eating the plant proteins, there will be a little bit more than there are animal proteins. Why? Because the animal proteins have some fats, hidden fats. And that is what we are trying to avoid, taking a lot of fats or oils in, into our bodies. And then obviously the fats and oils, that we, shall, we, we, we call them empty calories. They'll give you yes, energy. They'll, they'll make your body have a lot of store of the, the fats in the body but there's no, there's no nutrients that are giving you. They'll just give you, sugar will just give you energy and also the fats, the fats and oils will give you energy. And up here, we, we, we encourage that you use the oils mostly, especially the vegetable oils, because they're a little bit lower in cholesterol issues. It has been a, a day of training. We have learned a lot, specifically that a household should have enough food and also be able to eat a diverse diet through production of nutrient dense food. We look forward to see a healthy nation through the aquaculture program by them farmers not only producing fish, not only getting income, but also having adequate nutritious diet. This we are going to enhance through further trainings and also for more information get back to Aquaculture Business Development Program that you can be trained beyond what you have learned today. Thank you very much.